Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons. This is another Field Survey Friday video. In this video, we're going to get you guys a gentle introduction to GNSS surveys. We're going to answer these questions. What is GNSS? How do surveyors use GNSS? Why is this important? What well, makes GNSS surveys different from other types of field surveys? Okay, that seems like a lot, but we're going to, we're going to go easy. Um, GNSS surveying is complicated. It's, 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 it's literally rocket science. Uh, but you don't have to understand every little thing about it, but you need to know enough about it to, to understand how to use it properly and how uh, to avoid using it improperly. Uh, you also need to know enough about it to pass your exams. So uh, it's a great question. Um, actually, one of our one of our field surveyors, Angelo, uh, we use GPS a lot here at my shop. He asked a good question. He says, how does this stuff actually work? Good question, Angelo. I'm going to try and answer part of that question in this video. We'll, we'll do more than one video about, G, about GNSS surveying. Okay, so what is GNSS? Okay, it stands for Global Navigation and a Global Nav Navigation Satellite System. Okay, sometimes You'll hear people talk about uh, positioning and timing because you can use them for both because they have super accurate clocks, but global navigation satellite systems. So they were really built to, to aid navigation, right? It's what makes the uh, navigation app on your smartphone work, right? Is, is the, the ability to tap into GNSS signals, okay? Now GNSS is a, is a relatively newer term. So we used to just say GPS, Global Positioning System. That is the, U the U.S. system. It's the system that's run by the United States Department of Defense. But now there are other systems like Galileo in Europe, and China has a system, and I think India is coming out with a system. I think Japan has a system. Uh, so there, there are multiple systems. Russia has a system, uh, GLONASS. So when we say GNSS, we're talking about all those systems together. Okay, so... How do surveyors use GNSS? We use GNSS to establish the relative positions, so the, the, uh, the relative position of one point compared to another point um, without line of sight, okay? And that's really important. Why is that important? It's important because for thousands of years, in order to uh, be able to relate two points to one another in space, we had to be able to connect those two points through some series of tie lines that were based on line of sight. So you, you had to be able to either see directly between the two points or traverse with line of sight uh, through intermediate points to get to, to tie the two points together. Um, what that means is if you have two points that are really far apart or on opposite sides of an obstacle, say a mountain range or a building, um, it's really hard to survey them. Uh, so the, the fact that GNSS allowed surveyors to position things without having to have a direct line of sight between the two points was really powerful. It really changed surveying a lot. Okay, so uh, what makes GNSS surveys different from other types of field surveys? Okay, here's the main difference. In other types of field surveys, a total station survey or a leveling survey or a terrestrial laser scanning survey, the surveyor really controls the, the entire measurement system, right? The, the, the entire measurement system is under the surveyor's direct control, um, you know, the way the instruments are configured, the way they're operated, the, the, the layout of the actual survey, all of that is, is controlled by the land surveyor. With GNSS surveys, essentially what we're doing is surveyors are piggybacking onto a much, a much larger system that's used for a lot of things besides land surveying. In fact, most GNSS systems were not designed to support surveying. They're designed to support navigation and timing and some really smart people figured out how to use those systems for surveying. But we're, we're <laughs> surveyors are really piggybacking an unintended use on top of this larger system. What that means is there's large components of the system that are not in our direct control. Um, and that, that makes things complicated and it means you have to be careful. Okay, so how does this stuff actually work? Let's, let's talk about it. We're gonna do a gentle, gentle introduction to how does this stuff actually work. And I know you guys are going to really appreciate my beautiful technical diagram here. Okay, so let me let me explain what we've got here. These are the satellites. Okay, I'm going to call them birds. Okay, so we got five birds here. Now the reason I drew five satellites is because you need five satellites to get a good 3D position. Okay, so that's just kind of a rule of thumb, and, and we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so these are the satellites. 
Okay, then we have on the edges here, we have what are called ground control stations or ground stations. Okay, and the ground stations talk to the GPS satellites and the satellites, GPS satellites talk to the ground stations. Okay, so that's two-way communication between the ground stations and the satellites. Okay, and what, what the, the ground stations are set up over, essentially over known points. Okay, and so that's how we figure out where the satellites are. are. We, we know where the satellites are located in relation to the ground control points. And that means we know where the satellites are at any given moment in time, basically, okay? So there's a system of ground control stations around the Earth that track and talk to the satellites, and the satellites talk to the ground stations, and that's how we figure out in, at any given moment where the satellites are at in outer space around the Earth, okay? And that, that information is actually put into what they call an ephemeris, okay? There's, there's different types of ephemerises. We're not going to talk about that. We'll do that in a separate video. Just an ephemeris, just remember, is what tells a computer where the satellites were at a specific moment in time. And that data is created because we have ground control stations that track and talk to the satellites. Okay? So as a general rule, the satellites are not talking a lot with one another. Okay? But they are talking with the ground control stations. Okay? So then, so that, that's the satellites and the ground control station. So just remember, the communication between the ground control station and the satellite is two-way. Two-way. Okay, talk to each other. Okay, then we have the surveyor. Okay, so the, the satellites and the ground control stations, the surveyor doesn't own those or control those. Okay, but now I come out to do a survey, GPS survey, and I set up a couple of my own receivers, R1 and R2. Okay, now let's talk about that for a minute. In GPS surveying, at least right now, you always have to have two receivers, okay? And that's because you need two receivers to eliminate some of the errors that are inherent in the way GNSS works. So you always have two receivers when you're a surveyor, okay? Sometimes we call them a base and a rover. It just depends on what you're doing, okay? And then what, what happens is <clears throat> we talk, these, these receivers, they don't talk to the satellites, but they can listen to the satellites. So they get one-way communication from the satellites. And so the satellites broadcast a radio signal. Okay, and it's a it's a series of waves. We'll talk about that in another video. And the receivers listen for those signals that come from the satellites. And the satellites tell the receivers, here here's where I am, receiver. Here's where I am. Here's where I am. Now you got to remember, these satellites are traveling super fast through space. They're orbiting the Earth, so they're not in a geostationary orbit. They're changing their they're they're changing in relation their position in relation to the receiver on the surface of the Earth changes every second. Right? It's constantly changing. Okay, so the surveyors are telling the receiver several times a second, here's where I am, here's where I am, here's where I am now, here's where I am now, right? And the receivers are tracking that information. Okay, now we'll get into, into it a little bit, a little more detail, but the GPS receiver that's in your phone or in a GIS grade receiver, it's just using the navigation signal, right? Okay, surveyors hack the system and we piggyback onto what's called the carrier wave to get a more accurate answer for location. I'm not going to get into detail in this video, but the, the, same, the basic principle is the same. We're listening to the satellites to figure out where they're at in relation to each receiver. Now remember, that's one-way communication. The receivers can't talk to the satellites. We just listen to the satellites, these two receivers. So we're different from a ground control station in that way. Okay, now this, every time the surveyor sends a little ping down to the receiver, a radio signal, that distance from the receiver from the satellite to the receiver, that's called a satellite range, a distance range, okay, it's called a range. Okay, that's how far each bird is from each receiver, okay? So it's gonna be different for each satellite and for each receiver, okay? So when you go out and you, when you're doing a GPS survey and you turn your receiver on, it's recording every five seconds or 15 seconds or 30 seconds, it's recording how far am I, how, what satellites can I see? And of all the satellites I can see, how far am I from each one? And it stores that information, stores that information, stores that information. And we're doing that at both ends. Now, in a static survey, there's no communication link between R1 and R2, R2 receivers. Okay? They, don't, they don't know anything about each other and they don't have to. Okay? What we do is when we come back into the office, we use what's called post-processing software. And it then uses all the satellite range information that we've given to the two receivers to calculate what's called a baseline. 
Okay, that is the line between the two receivers. Okay, so that's how far apart are the two receivers from each other. That's a baseline. And in GPS, it's almost always a 3D vector. Okay, so there's an XYZ component. Okay, and in what they call an Earth coordinate, Earth centered, Earth fixed coordinate system. Okay, your, your surveying software is going to show you that as a 2D distance with a, with a change in elevation, just like you get out of a total station. Okay, so in other types of surveying, so if it if it's so this is if there's no communication link between R1 and R2, that's we call that post process. We have to bring it back into the office after the survey and process the data to get the baseline. Okay, but if you have a radio link in what we call real time GPS surveying, so that's RTK or RTN, okay, then R2 and R1 can talk to each other. Now that requires a radio link or a cellular link, okay, but they can talk to each other if they have that, and then in real time. R2 can know how far it is from the base R1. Okay, but those are different kinds of surveying. Okay, so those are the basic components of the system, right? Let's just go over them. We've got the satellites, the birds. Okay, we have the ground control stations that talk to the birds and know where they're at. Then we have the two receivers, in this case, that listen to the birds. Okay, they, they listen to the birds. Based on the signal the birds broadcast, they calculate how far they are from each satellite. They store that information. And then we use that to calculate the 3D vector or baseline between the two receivers. Now, just to, to build on this example a little bit, and we're almost done, we could add another receiver. Let's say we add a receiver down here, R3. Okay. If we add R3 and it's running at the same time as R1 and R2, we will also get baselines to R3. Okay. Again, in, in a post-process survey, they, the receivers don't even have to know each other. You just power them on and start recording. Okay, so then we'll get we'll get some more baselines, something that looks like that. Okay, so this is really good at surveying when you don't have a line of sight. Remember, we talked about that. So I'll give an example. If there's a mountain range in between R1 and R2, we can set up R1 and R2 and survey on each side of the mountain range without having to have a line of sight. Okay, and these distances in between these two receivers can be really long. It could be a mile, it could be five miles, it could be 10 miles, it could be 100 miles. Okay, and we can measure those distances very accurately, right? Surveyors have never been able to do that before in the history of mankind. It's a very powerful thing. Okay, so that is a gentle, gentle, excuse me, introduction to GNSS surveys, field surveys. We're going to talk a lot more about GNSS, but this will give you an introduction to kind of the basic concepts of how it works and some of the terminology. We'll talk more about ephemerises and static surveys and fast static surveys and post-process surveys and real-time surveys and how they're different. And we'll talk about multipath and clock error and all kinds of stuff. We'll teach you guys all kinds of stuff about GPS. But there is your gentle, gentle introduction. I think what I will do in the next video is we'll talk about the different kinds of GNSS surveying, real-time versus post-process, and um, kinematic, static, real-time network surveying. We'll talk about those different kinds of surveys and, and how they're different and what kind of accuracies they have and that kind of, how you execute them in the field, actually execute them. So we'll, we'll cover some of that in the next video on GPS. Thank you for tuning in. We hope to catch you guys on the next Field Survey Friday video.